My name is Donnie Zara, and this is my family's restaurant, Zara's in North Oakland of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is my mother, Judy Zara, the chef, and my father, Johnny. Today, we're going to make Italian sausage calabrese style. My grandfather, Donato, came over from Basalagata, Potenza, Italy, and he was a butcher on Larbin Avenue, and my father learned how to make his sausage. My dad taught me how to do it. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm on my way out today uh, from North Oakland over to the uh, Pittsburgh Strip District. We're, uh, we're running an errand. It's, a, uh, it's a, basically an everyday errand that we have to do. Um, picking up produce, uh, picking up meats and, and fishes, and uh, all the good stuff. Today, I've got a super big uh, list because I'm making uh, Sausage, Italian uh, calabrese style sausage. Done. Got a nice warm Italian restaurant pad. There were two fireplaces in it. Looking forward to some, some, some uh, regulars, some friends, some family, some new people coming in and checking us out and uh, giving us some good compliments on, uh, on what we do best, making Italian food. We're in the strip district right now. I'm gonna go in, pick up all the supplies, and I'm gonna show you the, uh, the pork and the beef that I'm gonna hand select to make the uh, special products that we're making this evening. Pork butts. Boneless pork butts. That's the shoulder of the pig and uh, that's what makes the best sausage. You look at the meat, you look for nice graining. Uh, I don't like this one here. This one here is nice and solid. Has a, has a nice like uh, nice color to the fat which is going to make the pork nice and moist and give it uh, the kind of flavor and the consistency that we want. I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get out, I'm going to get a, a nice uh, nice case of these and uh, that's what we're going to use to make our Italian sausage. One of the best things about living in, in Pittsburgh and uh, having a restaurant uh, so close to the Strip District is that we have the advantage of like really having hands-on uh, control of our product. And we come down here, and we, can, we get all of our fresh seafood every day. And there's there's always something new. Like we see, I always see these razor pans like a couple times a year. You come down and you see fish, if you look at the eye, you look at the eye of fish, you see it's real nice and clear like that. That means it's real fresh. You see wonderful selection of seafood down here. And uh, it's just a little bit of what they got. What's up, brother? How you doing, my man? Good. Hey, uh, that, that car looks fantastic. Let me, have, uh, let me have five pounds of that, please. Four. Oh, bigger pieces? Smaller? Pick out the nice ones. I, I trust the fish man. I, I leave. I leave it. In, I see that it's nice and fresh. I'll let you pick out the ones for me. You pick me out the good ones. We're gonna have a nice special on uh, fresh cod today. Broiled cod again. I'm doing that with uh, homemade cavatelli, uh, aliolio, and sautéed spinach beside the cod. A little uh, fresh lemon zest. Forget about it. Okay, this is the fun part. Everything is uh, clean, sanitized. Sharpened and uh, honed. Now we're ready to start cutting. Then we're going to go to the grinder, and uh, after that, we'll mix in the spices. So here we go. As I said earlier, uh, you want to pick out like a good pork butt. We got boneless this time. If you, uh, we buy boneless uh, just because it's it's a little bit quicker for us to work with. But I do like to try the one with the bone in every once in a while. And uh, you could go ahead and uh, trim around that bone, and then what we do is we take uh, we take some sauce, a little bit of Chianti wine. You could throw some olives in, in there with it in a uh, you know big baking pan. Some uh, mushrooms if you like, a little bit of black pepper, some garlic cloves, and you just put that in the oven. And then you know you just pull them out of the oven, and, and you just eat the meat right off the bones. It's delicious. So on the pork butt, you know we want to leave. Um, we do want to leave most of the fat on there, but anything that you see that's not desirable, like we'll just take off. So we're going to trim off this like little piece right here. It didn't look nice. I don't want to eat that. I don't want my guests to eat it. And I was going to take that off, okay? And uh, then pretty much uh, 
that's pretty much it. We're just gonna we're just gonna cut these uh, this uh, into strips that will fit through the grinder real nice. And uh, that's it. Always, uh, you know, always keep uh, your your knife hand clean. This, this hand shouldn't touch the meat. That way, your your uh, that way your hand doesn't the knife doesn't slip out of your hand. You know, don't get cut. And it's important to have a sharp knife so you're not forcing a knife and you can end up pulling too hard or pushing too hard and slipping and cut yourself. So you have to have a sharp knife. See how that just cuts right through. That's it. That's what you want. Like I said, we do want to leave fat on, but anything that's undesirable, you know, we're gonna take that off. The fat's important. You gotta have the fat. That's what that's what keeps the sausage moist, and uh, that's what gives the sausage a lot of its flavor. Too much fat or or uh, a poor quality cut will make your sausage uh, greasy, and uh, it will also shrink up. There won't be nothing left to it when it when it cooks out. Like our sausage. Doesn't doesn't we don't lose it? We don't have that shrink in our sausage like you get that greasy sausage out of the supermarket. It's got all that. Uh, it looks like real red. It's got all that uh, different like calorings and preservatives and all that garbage in it. Um, that will, that shrinks up after you cook it. Our sausage maintains like a nice like full consistency because we start with uh, high quality uh, meat. And it, it's very important. You get. What, what, you, uh, what you put into your sausage is what you get out of it. If you start with good stuff, then you end up with good stuff. That's why you can only use the best. You spend a little bit extra money, but it's, it's, it's well worth it. Anyway, I bought 87, I got 87 pounds of, uh, of pork butt today, and that gives me uh, basically like four nice big, you know, cuts like this, okay? And uh, so, Typically, like these, these are about uh, 16 to um, you know 20 pounds, about so about 18 pounds on average. So if you went out to the store and you bought one of these, you know, figure look, look for a 20, look for 18, 20 pound or whatever. Now we're we're just doing straight pork with the natural casing and uh, you know our our spices. And, and for the calabrese style, we use fennel, sugar salt and red pepper seed and that's it that's all that goes into it we do a once through course we grind our meat once through and we use a coarse blade and uh this is a this is a coarse blade okay that's a plate this is a, this is a fine blade all right so if you're ever going to use a fine blade like when we make our meatballs what we do is we first put the uh we first put the meat in the coarse blade and then we run it once through the uh, fine, okay? You can do it twice through the uh, finer blade. But uh, today we're making sausage, so that's what we're gonna talk about. You're gonna keep your knife sharp. When you hold your steel, keep your hand down low at the bottom of the steel. That way if you come off, you have a less chance of hitting your hand. Hold a steady angle on your blade. This is good fat here, this nice, thick, like consistent, like fat is what you want on your meat. This is what you want to go into your sausage. Okay? Like if you see, I don't like this like looser, this looser fat. It's like, it's uh, I, I'll just like, I'll trim that off. I don't, I won't use that. I'll take, you, could, you don't have to waste this meat. But uh, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that looser, like fat. It's almost like a skin. You just take that. Here's a piece right here. See? Just gonna take your blade and start it in easy. Work it away from you. As you work it, you just like hold on to that. And you just turn your knife back in. And come right off. You didn't waste any. Didn't waste any meat. And we got off the undesirable piece of uh, product that we don't that we don't want in our final uh, final sausage or final product. So uh, we just cut up 87 pounds of uh, pork butts, and uh, we got them cut, you know, to strips so it'll fit nice and smooth through my grinder. And with the exception of a couple pieces that I threw my instinct, this is all the waste that I got from that. This is this couple handfuls of, uh, you know, is all that I managed to like 
it, it, this is what I'm getting rid of. But you have to keep the fat on. I keep saying it over and over again. This is uh, waste. I'm just going to toss this. I'm going to wash my hands again. I'm going to clean up my station again. And then I'm going to start grinding. Okay? Okay, so uh, we're all set up. Our grinder's nice and clean. Our mixing tub is nice and clean. Uh, we have a coarse blade set up in here. We're going to run the pork through once coarse. And uh, after that, we're going to start mixing the spices. You'll notice uh, that this, this meat is coming through. You can see like these distinctive, like nice ground like patterns in the meat. And that's because the blade is sharp. If the, if the meat's coming out mushy, you're going to see it right here how nice it's coming out. If the meat's coming out mushy, that means that you need to keep your blade sharpened or you need to buy your blade. And that's that. That's, this is uh, 90 pounds of ground uh, pork butts. So now we're going to prepare our mix and mix the spices. Okay, for a calabrese sausage, simple is best, okay? Um, we're going to use sugar, salt, spicy red pepper seed, Whole fennel is the key. Okay, well, it's all it's all the key. But one of my trade secrets is cold water. This is a mixing bowl. I'm gonna put some cold water in here, and I'm gonna let it mix and have all. It's gonna soften up the hard spices, and it's gonna help dissolve the sugar and salt, so I get a nice even mix throughout the pork, and it really makes a big difference. So you don't get any hot spots or dry spots or you know, you got the idea. All right. Okay, so make sure everything's nice and clean, your hands, your arms, everything. You're gonna, you're gonna spread out your meat, okay? And then we got our, our spices, our sugar, our salt, our red pepper seed, and our whole fennel. And I'm just gonna evenly put this over top of all the coarse ground pork. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this all in. So I'm just going to start by just like massaging it all around. Just get it down in there. And now this is when it works because this is cold. And I'm just going to fold this all in. Work this all in so the spices are all even. We don't have any, we don't want to have any areas with no spice in it, and we don't want to have any areas that are clustered up with big clumps of spice. It's gonna keep holding, it's gonna pull this up, and roll back. Just take my finger, take my hands, push it down, pull them together, pull it back, push it in. My hands are open. Now it's like give it a squeeze. Very cold. <laughs> you want everything to be cold. If you have a partner to help you do this, it would help so you can take, take turns. So the stuff in the back, you see I'm going to start working on four. And flip this up, roll it in. See this here doesn't have spice in it yet. This here has too much spice in it. This is starting to get mixed, but none of it's done. It still needs a lot of, still needs a lot of mixing. You see, it's becoming real uniform. And if you get a nice, if you, I don't know if you could focus in on this, but you could see, like, how the the pepper seed and the fennel is nice and distributed, nice and evenly distributed. So uh, I went ahead. I thoroughly, I thoroughly got this mixed through. Again, I'm going to clean my hands, my arms, and the station, and then we're going to prepare. Then we're going to prepare to do all uh, the stuffing.
Okay. So it's obvious, you know, we keep saying sanitation, sanitation, sanitation. Cleanliness is godliness, or how we're saying good. You just want to have everything nice and clean, spotless. We're going to wipe everything down. And then we'll be ready to start stuffing our sauces. Let's fill this up. When you're stuffing your tube, you want to make sure that, you know, you, you, you try to, you know, get it nice and packed in there and so you don't have any air pockets and that, that keeps the air out of, that keeps out of the air out of your casing. I, I'll be working on it. I'll be getting the casings ready in a minute. So after I get this done and we're going to get, we'll go over the casings and I'll show you, I'll show you how to prepare your casings for the, uh, for the stuffing. Okay, so when you when you buy your uh, casings from a from a good butcher shop or whatever supplier or purveyor you can find, typically they'll come in a uh, seal pack like this. No, they don't. Uh, how else? No, they usually come dry. I get them pre-flushed and soaked. It's a lot easier for me. Okay. What, what the other ones are dry and soft. Well, okay. these are the ones that I've always worked with. And uh, if you're going to do a smaller batch, all you do is. Uh, you, you just take these and you drain them off and then you put them in a Tupperware container. We use an empty ricotta cheese container and it's put a whole bunch of salt on it. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse these off in a school of boss, a colander, a strainer. Yeah, put them in a bowl. And then I'm going to uh, put them in a bowl with a lot of cold fresh water and uh, then they're going to be ready. Give me the bowl. I like to rinse all the salt off them real Give me the bowl. Put that on your key ring. You're officially in the sausage game. Right. We could be making sausage now. Okay, so when you when you take your casings out of the pack, okay, we're gonna we want to put them in a bowl. They're gonna be filled with salt. We want to we want to get them loosened up real nice. All right. And so the water gonna help like get all through there, like rehydrate, and loosen everything up. All right, I make I like to make sure that I get all the salt off of them so it stays off of my workstation. So I just put them in a big school box, a big colander. My, my dad already helped me prep them. So once you get all the salt off of there, all the salt water, you see how they're starting to get nice and loose. That's what you want. You tell everybody what's in this recipe for the spices. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you did that. After you rinse off all the salt from your casings and you get them nice and loose, you're going to want to put some water in the bowl. Nice, nice bowl of water and uh, that way you'll see what I'm going to do next here. You see how they're loosening up? That's how they should, that's how they should, they should look. So once you have your casings rinsed and rehydrated, nice and moist and loose, okay, you're going to start to like work work one individual casing out away from the from the bunch all right just gonna take your time and uh, just, just work it out if you try to pull too fast you'll get a, a big knot and a mess all right this one was pretty short so now what you do is you find the end of the casing put the other end in the water and then you find the end of the casing and you start some water you open it up and then you'll start some water in it okay and then you'll start to work it through I would put it on, run the water through twice because you take the twist out. Yeah, that's what you're doing. We're, we're taking a twist out. I, th I learned how to do this from my dad. So the water, the water's pulling the twist out, all right? And I'm just laying it over. Now what I do is I'll do it again. I'll fill this with water, this casing. I fill it with water. I mean, not a whole bunch. Come over here and you'll be able to see. You see, you see the water working through there? See that? That's what's taking the twist out of sausage. Once you fit this on and you have the water in the casing, you'll just take your time and start to push this through. It's taking the water's coming out, and there's a little bit of water there. 
up to the end. And that's it. I'm gonna leave this this end piece off the end of the stuffer, all right? And I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start down. This is gonna start to compress, and I I'm, I don't want to grab onto this. I don't want to tie a knot in here. I just want the air the air to come out. See the air is coming out, and there's the meat. And you should just like take your time, let it fill in. You want it to be nice and, and taut or tight, you know, nice and full, firm. It should feel firm. You gotta feel like a boner. And nice. And right about there is where I'm gonna stop, take the pressure off, and this will fill up a one gallon freezer bag, Ziploc freezer bag. Here, Dad, let me show him how I do Let me show him how I put it in the bag. We go. You don't have to show anybody how to put it in the bag. Run this off. Obviously, like, some people uh, might not have a stuffer, or you don't even have to stuff this. You could, you could just go ahead and mix your sausage. You could make it in the balls, or you could make it in the patties, and that's what we're going to do right now. And the best way to cook a sausage patty. What's that, Mom? That's right. Just like Mom said, you get your cast iron skillet, some extra virgin olive oil, just a little bit, and then we're going to heat it up, get that nice and hot, and I'm going to make my patties. I'm going to make some nice patties, cut a couple pieces of fresh Italian bread. Make it real thin, John. My dad likes it real thin, that's the best way. We, we use Sancholi Brothers bread. Sancholi Brothers, an old Italian family. They have uh, a, a very old business over in Bloomfield. Uh, just across the way, we get our bread from Sancholi Brothers Bakery every day. They send us a delivery. It's a real nice, uh, crusty Italian bread. Real soft, fluffy uh, center, a nice crusty outside too. We love it, our guests love it. That's it, we're just gonna make some Italian sauce sandwiches right now. Right now we're just gonna take, we just wanna see how our batch turned out. So we're gonna keep it very simple so we can see exactly how we put it together. Yeah, you guys are gonna love it. Yeah, it's a good thing to do before you start stuffing. Yeah, it's a good thing to do before you start stuffing. It's a good thing to do before you start stuffing. And uh, it's a good thing to do before you start stuffing is to go ahead, after you make your mix, to go ahead and taste the sausage to make sure, like, you know, maybe I want a little bit more sugar, maybe a little bit more salt. It's better to go, if you're not sure, to go less with those ingredients. Then you can always add more after you mix and mix it again, and then go ahead and make another piece. It's important to get your oil in your skillet hot before you pick you put anything on there, fish or meat, because if the oil is not hot, then uh, it will get it will make everything uh, like oily or greasy or soggy. So you got to have it you got to have it nice and hot at the right temperature, so it sears everything immediately. If it's too hot, it will start to smoke and burn. You don't want that. So if your oil at the right temperature and the skillet going well, you should easily be able to get your spatula underneath. You'll be able to see the, the sausage like browning properly around the edges. And uh, give a little test, bring it up. Cook it nice and thin. You'll have a nice, nice consistent uh, temperature all the way through the meat. Nice and brown and crispy on the outside. Nice and moist and cooked through properly through the center. When you're cooking sausage, uh, using this method in the skillet, you don't want to ever be pressing down on the meat with your spatula. All that does is presses all the juices out of the sausage. It's completely unnecessary and it's an incorrect method. You just want to go ahead and flip your meat like once on each side and that's it. It's done. If you're going to cook your sausage on a grill or in a casing, you don't want to jab it with the fork when it's in the natural casing because that will let also let all, all the juices. You want to use a pair of tongs to do your flipping. You want to keep all the nice juices inside the meat. Once your meat feels firm, 
nice and golden brown on the outside. It's all cooked all the way through. You see I just flip this piece here and I give it a little push and you can see how soft that is. That's because it's not done yet. You see how it just kind of sits down? Here, the meat's nice and firm. The temperature of the meat is cooked too properly. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and plate this sausage up now. We're gonna cut some nice fresh Italian Santoli brothers bread, and then we're gonna see how our batch turned out. Okay, now's for the moment of truth. Let's see how this batch turned out. It smells so good. Mmm. It's perfect. Nice and juicy, very moist. Very aromatic with the fennel coming through. A little bit of salt for flavor. The sugar with the right balance, proper sweetness, and the red pepper seed gives it that kick. My grandfather will be proud. We hope to see you at Zara's restaurant. Stop by soon. There's a link at the bottom of our page, zarasrestaurant.com or zarasbgh.com. 3887 Bigelow Boulevard, Pittsburgh, PA, North Oakland.